Today, I'm working on calipers, brakes, etc. I've got to replace the brakes. Um, I've already done the other side. Uh, and I'm also going to be painting both the carrier and the caliper today, as well as the rotor hat, uh, cleaning up the hub and everything else like that, mounting surface. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory how these things come apart. There's a lot of good videos. Uh, one from 1A Auto, that vehicle guy, man, he, he does a great job of explaining it. I'll, I'll put a link down there. Anyway, 2005 Volvo XC90. This is the rear passenger side. Um, anyway, so we'll get on. I just wanted to show you what it looked like before, and I'll show you a couple places uh, as we go on. I'm going to take my, uh, my handy-dandy Milwaukee with my, with my stiff bristle. And we're going to go over everything here. Uh, stay away from the from the rotor surface. Uh, if you don't know how to check to see if your rotors need replacing, let me get in here. You can see that there are some grooves, like, and then this line here, up and down. This is where it stopped, as I understand it. The brake rotors, or the brake pads, set there while they were hot. Um, so if I were being a perfectionist, I probably would replace these, but... You want to check to see if there's a lip up here at the top, and there really is not. And there's just barely one here at the bottom. And I can't really get my fingernail in any of that, so I'm going to call her good. Uh, next steps, uh, like I said, wire wheel. And then i got to pull this bolt off, a little 10 millimeter, and uh, go from there. I'll give you some updates as we go. See you in a bit. All right, I've got a little bit of this done, and I just wanted to show you. This is uh, nice and shiny, but I wanted to show you this right here. You can see this kind of filmy spot. That's actually uh, some kind of a coating that goes on the rotor. I probably should not have buffed that off. You can see more of the coating here, but there's the shiny, and then here's the, the rusty part. Um, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to paint it. I'm going to coat it properly and everything. You can see the front of the rotor hat as well. The coating versus the non-coated because I've buffed it all off. And then there's my caliper and carrier. It looks a lot different, I think. But anyway, uh, there are still some spots like in here. Um, obviously, once I get the pad out, the carrier, I can get all the nooks and crannies and stuff like that. Uh, you want to be careful with your wire wheel not to get like this uh, bleeder valve cover or any of these rubber boots top and bottom. Uh, so yeah, uh, interesting. You can tell that my rotors have, my brake pads are slightly used because, man, those sliders are a ways out there. We'll compress that. We'll figure out what's going on. You can also see how much is, of the piston has come out. But there is still some beef left on those pads. Probably don't need to replace them, but I'm gonna anyway. So, see you on the side, Ray. All right, in we go. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if my video is gonna flip over. So, I'm coming in this way to show you. This is the bolt that we need to remove, and that one down there as well. The 1A Auto video that uh, I was talking about with the vehicle guy, who by the way is awesome. I don't mean to be making fun of him. He's just, it's just unique. Um, anyway, he says those are 14 millimeters. Uh, in my car, they are 13 millimeter bolts. Um, and then this one is a seven millimeter hex Allen key, hex socket, you know. Um, that's what they call it for real, is a hex socket. Let's see if I can get this to, uh, focus but you got to pull this little cap off um, the way he describes to do it and I really like this you take El Pry Baro just uh, pull it off don't lose it you do that top and bottom and you remove all of that um, he does mention and it's a good idea that you want to remove your ABS sensor wire it's this right here and the way that you do that is you just kind of pull up like this as you're twisting I can't do it with my left hand you just kind of twist it as you pull out rock it back and forth just a little bit and it pops free and then there's another clip up here 
and you're just going to pull that one off. That one's going to be difficult with one hand. Let's see if I can see if I can do it. You can detach this either side. I can't do it with one hand. Anyway, you just pull that off, and I'll show you in a minute. So I got that off. You can see I just kind of wound that little clip in there and just threw it in the top of my spring. Uh, that way it's free. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove everything now. Oh, hey, look, there's that other clip that I should have undone. Uh, I guess when I put it back together, I'll have to make sure I put that back in there. In any event, I'm uh, going to remove stuff now. By the way, look how shiny all of that is. Doesn't look too bad, does it? All right, that little bolt is out. I had to rotate it a long ways. Um, you can see that there are several holes here, but only one of them is threaded. Those are pretty teeny tiny threads, actually. Uh, in any event, uh, that goes back into the hub, which is back behind here. There's my caliper, it's all set. Um, I, on the other side, I noticed that these slider screws, there's nothing holding them in. So you can just actually just pull that off once you get the, the cali or the pads off. Um, I'll leave that up to you whether or not you want to uh, pull those all the way out through this side or not. I did loosen them while the caliper was on, uh, while, or rather while the carrier was still bolted to the, to the knuckle. Um, but it's up to you. Also, I do recommend these hooks. They're pretty cool. Uh, this one doesn't fit exactly on my car. I think that's probably just because of the way that I'm holding it up. Um, it really, I think, is meant to go on the coil spring or on some other attaching point. Um, but you can see it just kind of holds it up out of there, out of the way, or holds the caliper there out of the way. Um, so, yeah. Next part here, um, because the XC90 has... Uh, parking brakes on the rear. Those are actually a drum brake uh, Inside of the center of the rotor here, so I'm going to take my little one pound dead blow my little persuader and I'm going to give it a couple of taps on the back side Give it a couple taps on the front just trying to loosen everything up and then I'm gonna have to set the camera down uh, Because I'm gonna have to really work at this one. I can tell so See you in a minute by the way this is what drum brakes look like. They're stupid. I hate them. I hate them. Uh, in any event, the, the idea here is that you've got an anchor and a, and a spring that's holding this side together, right? And the shoes, not pads, shoes are set up in here so that when you yank on the emergency brake cable, this piece right here gets pulled down and it wedges them apart. Uh, so you'll actually see, this is the stop, you'll actually see uh, distance grow here and here uh, in order to make them make contact with the inside of the drum. Uh, there's also a, a pretty beefy, hefty spring on this side that holds them back together so that when you release the clip or the braking, the parking brake cable, it uh, compresses those back together again. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, you'll notice that they, they do wiggle, they do move just a little bit. Uh, that's by design. Careful that you don't pull them off, uh, because if you do, um, good luck, because I'm not going to help you put them back together, because I hate them. Hate them. All right, now that I'm done expressing my distaste for drum brakes, this is the hub. You can see that it's pretty corroded, right? This one... Uh, the other one I was able to get pretty clean with a wire wheel. We'll see how I do on this one. Um, the reason that it's corroded is because, well, it's made out of metal. <laughs> uh, and this is a good thing to put on it. Um, I like this copper stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it, uh, it goes on, coats pretty well. So when I get done with this, I'm not going to paint this surface. Instead, I'm just going to slather it with uh, that anti-seize compound so that there's a little bit of a buffer, can help keep some of the moisture out of there, and, uh, you know, go from there. So, I'm going to get that done. I'll see you a little bit later. I'll show you how, how well this wire wheel works, if I can hold it with one hand. against 
back there with one hand. And there it's finished. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, some of this corrosion, I mean, that's, that's pretty deep. I don't know if I'm ever going to get that out. Sure, I could take it somewhere and I could have it resurfaced, or oops, I missed something there. Or, you know, I could probably just replace the thing. Good enough. All right, let's deal with this caliper for a minute. So you can see here that this uh, pad spring is here. I'm actually not completely sure what purpose that has, except I think just to hold the carrier against the caliper. I think that's all it's doing because the pads are actually trapped here in this groove, right? And so the spring makes contact with the with the uh, carrier all the way across, helps keep it set in there. So all you got to do to get that off, oops, I lost my, my hook. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to grab a pair of pliers and you're just going to yank right there. It shouldn't be really a yank. You're going to pull, and you're going to pull that off, and it uh, should be good at that point. Um, once you get that off, like I said, the slider bolts, there's nothing holding them on, and so you can actually just slide that whole carrier out this way, um, you know, towards me, towards the camera, once you get that done. Uh, pads will come out. Uh, there are some clips on this pad here against the piston, or the actually attached to the piston, and there are no clips holding this one on, it's just kind of pressure fit. So um, that's how it goes. So there's the carrier, complete with the uh, slider bolts. You can see that they're pretty cruddy, gross, etc. And there's quite a bit of surface rust on these, on this carrier. Um, I'm trying to get my camera to focus just a little bit, sorry, it likes that hammer in the background too much. It's all about the contrast. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, in any event, that's, uh, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to pull those bolts out, and uh, we're going to go put them on my wire wheel, on uh, my bench grinder, and clean them up. And then I'm probably going to do the same with this carrier. Get it all nice and pretty. There's the caliper over here. Uh, you can see the piston, again, has traveled quite a long ways. So I'm going to clean up the rest of this caliper, uh, start getting it prepped for paint, um, which just includes some masking tape. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm actually going to sand this down. I'm going to use some 240 grit and then some 400 grit uh, just to get the surface prepped. Um, I'm also going to wipe it down. Um, you can use some uh, caliper cleaner, brake parts cleaner, etc. If you use that, I uh, use some isopropyl alcohol, just some regular rubbing alcohol, and a lint-free rag. And that'll get everything a whole lot nicer for you to paint. Uh, it's all about the prep. So, in any event, that's it. Well, that looks a whole lot better. It's not perfect. But it does look better. Uh, I guess I should get out of the shadow so you can see it all. Good enough. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compress that caliper piston. Uh, so I'm going to use this tool here that I got for, I think, 20 bucks, Harbor Freight. Um, you'll need a crescent wrench, or if you want to go to the trouble of finding <laughs> what size that is, go ahead. I didn't feel the need to. Um, but you'll want one with quite a bit of uh, leverage. Um, it looks like you should be turning this piece up here at the top but that's really not the way it goes you actually really should uh, turn the screw um, what it does is it wedges itself against the piston and then this piece wedges itself inside of the caliper uh, where the brake pads go and uh, yeah that's what you do uh, well you turn it and that's what you do and I'll show you when it's all set up okay so this is how it gets set up just like that. Um, um, it's actually crooked just a little bit, so I'll fix that before I start pushing. Uh, the reason I'm going to compress this now is so that I can get in and I can clean up all of this without having to worry about me busting up that uh, rubber uh, piston boot and um, 
yeah so that's what I'm gonna do right now uh, I am expecting it's probably gonna take me you know two minute stops to compress that and that's just because I've got weak shoulders right now and I can't turn anything so in any event that's that kind of funny I forgot to mention this is my metric crescent wrench <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's also SAE okay I've already painted the rotor hat and the carrier I'll show you that in a second uh, this is how I masked everything off um, anything that you don't want to get painted the color of your caliper <laughs> protect it uh, I'm not too worried about this um, I'm not a perfectionist if I were you know, I'd probably be taking the caliper off and bleeding the brakes afterwards but you know, I, I just want a little bit of color on it so um, we're gonna go with yellow and I've chosen VHT high temp caliper paint 900 degrees Fahrenheit resistance should be good so you're just gonna start off with I'm gonna try and do this without uh, looking in the screen so if I lose focus sorry you want to start out just a little bit ways away you want to do light coats you can see how much that spreads everywhere that's why I say if you don't want it yellow cover it or you know whatever color paint you have you're just going to do light coats, thin coats, many coats, many thin coats, and no runs is better than one thick coat that runs everywhere. Sorry, I'm losing you. I'll probably have to edit that out. Um, my other one did this as well. It's probably just because I haven't prepped it well enough. Uh, hmm, don't know, don't care. How about that? Okay, so this stuff dries really, really quickly. Especially if it's thin coats, if it's light coats. I'm probably going to end up holding this with my hand as I paint it again. I paint the other sides. But that's good. So, one of the things that you got to do, you see I missed this underside here is you're going to have to hold it a couple of different ways to get everything to painted. Um, so if, if you're an artist at all, look at the angle of, look at the direction that you're spraying and get all of those surfaces everywhere that you can. And then when you flip the thing over, you can get all of the opposing surfaces. I'm going to let this dry for a minute. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to show you Here's my carrier. I went blue because blue and yellow are flat colors of the Swedish flag. And there's my uh, rotor with the painted hat. Looks pretty good, huh? Again, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Um, this one here, oh, I got it pretty thick. So it still needs to dry just a little bit. And I've got a goober right there. If the, <laughs> if the camera will focus, that would be good. But in any event, so I'll let it dry for just a more, minute more, and then we can call it good. This is my anti-seize, the copper stuff. Uh, my brush got bent. I don't know if that was, uh, you know, on purpose or, or what, but it's bent pretty good, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but it still works. So I'm just going to apply this stuff all over here. I'm going to make a pretty thick coat, but I can't do so while I'm holding my camera because, you know, I'm not that coordinated. I am going to put a little bit here in the thread holes uh, where the bolts, uh, where the lug bolts go, uh, just to prevent them from seizing. Um, it does change torque values just a little bit, but not enough that I'm really worried about it. So uh, I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so this is what it looks like when I'm done. You can see it's relatively thick but more importantly it just covers everywhere so right and like I said I put a little bit in each of those holes just to help prevent it from uh, seizing up uh, I also put it in this little uh, hole that the 10 millimeter bolt goes in uh, that we took the rotor off with so uh, I'm gonna wait for that to finish drying again not perfect 
but close enough. I'm in a little bit of a hurry. It was one of the mistakes I made. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll show you as, as, uh, as it's show you <laughs> as it's going back together. I did have a little bit of overspray casualty. Uh, you can clean that off, you know, if you're worried about it. I'm not. So, all right, I have to apologize. Earlier in the video, I probably made it seem like one of those small holes was threaded for that little 10 millimeter bolt. In fact, none of those holes on the rotor are threaded. All the threads are here on the hub. I was trying to show you the threads down in the hole, down in that little hole, but I failed. So, you know, just wanted to correct that just to make sure that you know. All right, I got a plastic bag blowing around everywhere. Seems like every time I work on my car, I get wind or rain lately. At least uh, it's nice and not rainy right now. It is a little windy. It blows. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to walk you through reassembly. Um, there is a part here where I'm going to be lubing things up. If you're opting for the squeaky brakes method, don't lube anything. In other words, if you don't lube, uh, things get squeaky and it's annoying. So take a couple seconds, put some grease on it. Just, you know, yeah. I'll show you where I'm going to lube later. All right, so there's my holder. Uh, you can see that I've got the sliders put in it. All right, so where we're going to lube is we're going to lube up the slider shafts all the way around. We're going to lube here in this groove on both front and rear of the carrier. The reason that we're going to do that is because uh, this groove against the against the uh, horseshoe, it looks like a horseshoe, uh, this goes over top of the caliper and this is where the rear pad goes, or the, uh, the piston side caliper, or pad, piston side pad goes. So we're going to put some lube in here, that way it can slide, and we're going to put some lube in here, that way the static pad can slide as well, um, and we're going to do that. Anywhere that metal touches metal and it slides, you want to put some lube. I use this stuff here. Okay, Permatex builds good stuff. It's orange in color. Don't need a ton, but we're going to put some in there, and then I'm going to rub it in with my fingers um, all over everywhere, and then I'm going to have to go get some new gloves because I'm leaving, like, yellow spray paint chips everywhere. But anyway, see you in a minute. Okay, so that's the brake caliper all assembled with the carrier and the pads. I just got to put that clip on, but I'm going to put that clip on after I get the thing mounted. So it's just the reverse. We're going to throw the, uh, since the sliders are already in there, they're not yet tight. I'm going to wait until I get the, cal the slider, excuse me, the carrier. I'm going to wait until I get the carrier mounted to the hub first, uh, to the knuckle, and... Um, then I'm going to tighten everything up. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that now. So see you on the other side. I'm all done. There it is. You, uh, I tried to put the wheel on so that you could see everything. But there's the front. Even though it's a giant caliper, you can't even see it. Yellow. Yeah, it's just kind of poking through. It's fun. But at least everything's done right. And, uh, you know, new pads grease everything so don't feel too bad about that see you later